The 1997 Christmas holidays about to come to fruition, the 92 Buick Skylark having reached an age of interchange, 127,000 miles registering on the odometer, Gary approaching Bill Bogner Buick Chevrolet dealership for automotive negotiations. Bill having nothing on the lot that was of interest, but Gary was aware of his weekly Thursday flight, piloting his Cessna aircraft to Dallas to attend a wholesale auction of used General Motors cars. Bill questioning the prospective buyer about his automotive aspiration. Gary having owned two Skylarks, coveted the Buick model, preferably white. Either a six or four cylinder would suffice, as long as it was still under warranty. Gary filling out a credit application with long-standing automotive financier, Southwest National Bank in Wichita. Bill returning from Dallas calling Gary at home, relating the news he had purchased a white 97 Buick Skylark, but for some reason the Southwest National loan application he submitted was denied. Gary failing to understand why the loan was refused, but accepted the commiseration, not sure of his next move when the phone rang again, it was Bill calling back, saying he had submitted the loan contract to GMAC, and it was accepted. Gary's car was being loaded on the transport would arrive from Dallas late tomorrow afternoon. The five-hour journey to Sabetha, Kansas in the 97 Skylark was a solemn occasion for Gary and son Robert, who was on leave from the Navy. The December winter day's somber overcast was representative of the occasion. The passing of Charles Terry. He was known as exemplar of Christian character, he and Esther having celebrated 58 years together in Kiowa. Deciding in 1987, to move to the Apostolic Christian Retirement Village in Sabetha. Charles' attributions in life included his two daughters, Eleanor, and husband Chris who lived in Peoria, Illinois, and a younger daughter, Rita Ann, and husband Delvin who resided in Sabetha. Charles having been a long-standing employee of a Sitgo oil company, through the years a Singularity employee, maintaining the Corwin, Kansas pumping station, and without reservation, also farming his acquired acreage from the Roth family legacy. Gary and Rob arriving at the home of John Lehman, the ministering elder for both the Sabetha and Kiowa churches, and also the CEO of the Sabetha Nursing Home and Retirement Village, the two accepting an invitation to prevail the night at the Lehman residency. The evening viewing at the mortuary found the remaining Kiowa family entourage having arrived. Bud and Helen and the Johnson family, joining many friends gathering to celebrate the reminisce of his life, to bequeath their respects and say goodbye. Gary and Rob having been called upon to be pallbearers on the Kansas overcast winter morning, the weather still befitting for Charles Terry, having lived all his life in Kansas. The morning commemorative graveside service found many in attendance, it was noticeable to family, before the service had begun. Jan was not in attendance, but her absence was soon dispelled, arriving just in time for the burial ceremony. Gary was relieved and thankful she was there, the circumstances of the church sanctioning her affiliation, because she initiated the divorce proceedings, might for some reason inhibit her attendance. The ceremony coming to a conclusion, upon leaving, Gary paused, turning about, a final look at the burial site, no this is not an enduring remembrance. He was having thoughts of Charles Terry the man, a figurative person whose presence he took for granted, a fixture during holiday meals or family gatherings, never outspoken or a complainant, just relating the pleasantries of his personality, mixed with everyday events, this was Charles, an identity but in reality, a man for all seasons in the service of the Lord. Father and son having declined an invitation to attend a church afternoon memorial dinner. The 97 Buick back on the road, journeying southwest, returning to Kiowa. Gary still having thoughts about the funeral, coming to the conclusion, monuments are not what you engrave in stone, but what is woven in the lives of others.